Ladies and gentlemen, we have yet another entry in the seemingly never-ending Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Panther. Directed by Ryan Coogler and starring Chadwick Boseman, Lupita Nyong'o, Michael B. Jordan, and Denai Guerrera. Following the death of his father, King T'Chaka, in Captain America Civil War, T'Challa has returned home to take his rightful place as King of Wakanda an African nation that gives off the appearance of a third world country to outsiders, but in reality is the most technologically advanced country on Earth. And they don't even have Tony Stark. They don't need Tony Stark. But no sooner does T'Challa ascend to the throne than he has to deal with the sinister Claw, who is trying to sell a stolen Wakandan artifact on the black market, and a dangerous former Navy SEAL who goes by the name Killmonger. There is so much going on with this movie that it's kind of hard to know where to begin. I guess I will start with the visuals, because this movie is just breathtaking. The level of detail that went into everything, from the various set designs in the Kingdom of Wakanda and the Afro-futurist architecture, I think that's the right word, the various costume designs, which were all influenced by different African cultures and all look just amazing. I was really impressed with Black Panther's royal guard, the Dora Milaje, who might just be the most badass all-female army ever. And yes, that includes the Amazons and Wonder Woman. Ooh. Who would win in that fight? The Amazons or the Dora Milaje? I don't know, but I would pay good money to see it. And of course, armor-plated battle rhinos. If that alone does not make you want to see this movie, I don't get you. It's got a killer soundtrack with a lot of powerful tribal beats and some new songs from Kendrick Lamar. Some really good action sequences. That car chase was so much fun. The characters and the cast behind them were just fantastic. And the interesting thing I find is that Black Panther seems to be the least interesting part of Black Panther. And that's not a shot at the character or at Chadwick Boseman, who gives a great performance, but the other characters are just so amazing. You've got Okoye, who is the leader of the Dora Milaje, a fierce warrior with a strong sense of dedication to her country. And if you thought Denai Guerrero was a badass on The Walking Dead, you ain't seen nothing yet. Nakia, played by Lupita Nyong'o, who is very compassionate and more than anything just wants to help those in need, and also acts as the love interest, but that's really a secondary aspect of the character. Zuri, the spiritual leader of Wakanda, played by Forrest Whitaker, who may or may not have some dark secrets in his past. M'Baku, played by Winston Duke, who is the leader of an outcast tribe of ferocious warriors. That guy... I hope we see more of him in this franchise. He was awesome. Fwa, played by Andy Serkis, who is just a downright evil bastard. And Circus was clearly having a lot of fun with this role. And while he may very well be the undisputed mocap king, it's so nice to see him get a chance to shine on his own. He needs to do more of that because he is good. Probably my favorite character in the movie, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, was Shuri, played by Letitia Wright. She is the scientific genius of Wakanda and basically acts as Black Panther's Q and also his little sister, and she excels in both roles. She was a lot of fun. And of course, you have Killmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, who is the best kind of villain, even with that silly name. Because you know the guy is an asshole, and you definitely don't agree with his methods for accomplishing his goals, but damn it, he has a point. And one of the best parts of this movie is seeing the world through both of their eyes. On the one hand, you have T'Challa, who grew up basically in paradise as the son of a king, lived a life of relative comfort. He tends to be very calm, collected, and level-headed. And he did not have to deal with the prejudice that many black people around the world face, thanks to Wakanda's isolationist policy. And it's not that they aren't aware of that kind of shit that's going on in the rest of the world. They know, and that's why they've quite literally walled themselves off from the rest of the world. And on the other hand, you have Killmonger, who grew up as an orphan in Oakland. Being an orphan is bad enough, but in Oakland, oh god. He is about as calm and collected as the name Killmonger would suggest, and he did not have the luxury of growing up walled off from the world's prejudice. He experienced it firsthand his entire life, and thinks Wakanda should be doing its part to fix this. By force if necessary. 
and he's pretty much willing to start World War III to do it. They both have some compelling arguments to support their own policies. Is it better to remain isolationist and protect yourselves from all the shit that's going on in the rest of the world? Or should you be trying to help everyone while risking exposing your world to outsiders? And I can't think of any part of that that would be relevant in today's political climate. Nope, not at all. In case you can't tell, I really like this movie. This was so, so good. Not perfect. It does have a few flaws. It does have a few pacing issues. There are times when the story really slows down to a crawl and then all of a sudden, whoa, we're moving at warp five. And as awesome as those armor-plated battle rhinos are, it is pretty obvious that they're CG. And the very first action sequence takes place at night and is briefly lit up by gunfire. And I found it a little hard to follow the action at times. I am not a fan of action sequences in the dark. But even with those flaws, I still love this movie. One of Marvel's best, I would say, and Coogler once again knocks it out of the park. If for some reason you have not seen this film yet, what are you waiting for? Armor-plated battle rhinos. What more do you need? And I think that's all I got to say about Black Panther. Till next time, Wakanda forever.